Okay, we're going to look at a typical calculus problem. It's a particle motion problem. Let x of t represent the position of a particle moving along the x-axis in meters at any given time t in seconds where t is greater than or equal to zero. And we have this function here. x of t equals one-half t cubed minus 4t squared plus 15t plus 5. Again, t is in seconds, and we're looking at meters, position function again. Uh, first thing we're going to look at is find the velocity at any given time t. Well, the velocity, which we'll call v of t, is equal to the first derivative of the position. So v of t, or velocity, equals x prime of t, which, using the power rule, we have 3, which comes from the cubed, times 1 third, and t to the 3 minus 1 is squared minus 2 times 4, which is 8 t plus 15. And this simplifies to x prime of t is equal to, we have a cancellation here, t squared minus 8 t plus 15. So this is going to be our position, our uh, velocity for any given time t that we plug in. Next, part b. What is velocity after four seconds? Well, we just use this function and plug in four for t. So x prime of four equals four squared minus eight times four plus fifteen. And for that, we have 16 minus 32 plus 15. And 16 plus 15 is going to be um, 31 minus 32, which equals negative 1. And the units are meters per second. So this is going to be our answer to our velocity at t equals 4 seconds. Next, problem C. When is the particle at rest? Justify your answer. Well, particles at rest when the velocity of the particle is 0. So we can set v of t, which is x prime of t, equal to 0. So we set up the equation here. 0 equals t squared minus 8t plus 15. And now we're going to solve this quadratic equation, we hope, by factoring. What are the factors of t squared? Well, simply t and t. And we know we have a positive 15, but a negative middle term. So we know we're going to have a negative times a negative. And next we ask ourselves the question, what, do we, what two numbers do we multiply together that when added up together equal negative 8. That's going to be negative 5 times negative 3. And so using zero factor property, we have t minus 5 is equal to 0, and t minus 3 is equal to 0. So t equals 5 seconds, and t equals 3 seconds. And it says, uh, when is the particle at rest? Well, I'm going to abbreviate here. Particle is at rest when t equals, and we're going to put here in set notation, 3 comma 5, which means at 3 seconds and at 5 seconds, because... x prime of t is equal to 0. So that's going to be our answer for part c. Okay, now, uh, part d. When is the particle moving right or to the right? Justify your answer. For this, we're going to create a number line. And on the top of this number line, we're going to put x prime of t. And at the bottom, 
the position, which is x of t. So on top, the derivative, first derivative or velocity on the bottom position. And over here in the number line, we put our critical numbers, which are 3 and 5. And we're going to examine this function to see if where the function is, where the first derivative or x prime of t is positive or negative. First of all, we look to the left of 3. So we pick any number less than 3. We can pick 0. Well, if t is 0, we have negative 5 times negative 3. And a negative times a negative is positive. All we're looking for is a sign, which means from 0, t equals 0 to t equals 3, the function value is increasing, which means the particle is moving to the right. Uh, next, between 3 and 5, which we can pick 4, 4 minus 5, that is a negative. But 4 minus 3 is positive. A negative times a positive is a negative. So in the open interval between 3 and 5, the value of the function is decreasing. So between 3 and 5, particles moving to the left. And we pick a number greater than 5. OK, so we have 6 minus 5. That's positive. 6 minus 3 is positive. Positive times a positive is positive. And so we have the function increasing. So. Uh, function, we'll put, um, one is the, okay, we'll say, one is the particle, okay, particle moves to right, on the intervals, and we'll put open intervals, zero to three, union, uh, five, comma, infinity. It says justify because x prime of t is greater than 0 or is positive. So that would be our answer to part d. Next. E, find the total distance traveled by the particle during the first six seconds. What we have to do is find the position at each critical number during the first six seconds. And the first critical number we're going to look at is the starting point. And we're going to make this table here with t and x of t, which is position. And so our time equals zero. That's a key point. Uh, our critical number, uh, t equals 3, t equals 5, and our endpoint, which is t equals 6. So these are the key uh, values we're looking for. So first of all, we're going to look for t equals 0. So we're going to say in this function here, x of 0 is going to be simply the uh, y-intercept, the intercept here. So x is 0, we have a value of 5. Next, we're going to try x of 3. And I'm going to come down, I'm going to come to the right here, so try to save some room. So x of 3 is equal to, well, we have uh, in this function here, 1 third of 3 cubed minus 4 times 3 squared plus 15 times 3 plus 5. And so one, 3 cubed is 27. One third of that is 9. So we have 9 and then minus 4 times 9 will be 9 minus 36. And 30, we have plus uh, 15 times 3. That's 45 plus 5 is 50. So what we have is 9 minus 36 is going to be negative 27. And plus 50 is going to equal 23. So between the time 0 and time 3, we have an increase of 18 meters over that distance. Next, we're going to look at the value for 5. 
So we're going to put x of 5 is equal to uh, 1 third of 5 cubed minus 4 times 5 squared plus 15 times 5 plus 5. And one 5 cubed is 125. So we have 125 thirds. And 5 squared is 25. And so uh, 4 times that is 100. So minus 100. And then plus uh, 15 times 5 is 75. Plus 5 is 80. So we'll say plus 80. And so we have x of 5 is equal to, um, we have 125 thirds minus 20, which is 60 thirds. And 125 minus 60 equals 65. So we have 65 thirds. So here we have 65 thirds. at t equals 5. And let's see, 23, I believe that's going to be uh, that's going to be 69 thirds minus 65 thirds. Two. Do you need calculators? Do you need calculators? They're good. So this is going to be negative four thirds in this distance. And lastly, we're going to do x of six. So x of six equals one third of six cubed minus four times six squared plus 15 times 6, and that's going to be plus 5. And this is going to be equal to 6 cubed is 216, and one third of that is 72. 6 squared is 36. 4 times 36, that's going to be a negative 144. And then 15 times 6 is 90. And then plus 5. So, so 72 minus 144 is going to be negative 72 plus 90 uh, plus 5. So that's going to be the negative 72 plus 90 is 18 plus 5 is going to be 23. So we have 23. And at 23 we're going to have, that's going to be 69 over 3, so we're going to go, uh, this case, plus 4 thirds. So our total distance is going to be the absolute value of all these things added together. And to make sure we're in the viewing space, I'm going to put this over here in red. So we're going to get uh, 18, which is going to be uh, 54 thirds. plus four-thirds, plus four-thirds. Now we're all looking at positive values here. So, so 54 plus four plus four, that's going to be 62 thirds, which is, uh, our answer is going to be 62 thirds meters, or we can write that as uh, 20 as a mixed number is 20 and two-thirds meters. So that would be our total distance covered both in mixed number and in, in uh, improper fraction form. Okay, next, F. Find the acceleration of the particle at any time and at three seconds. Well, A of T 
equals x double prime of the, the, the second derivative of the position function, which in this case is going to be 2t minus 8. So that's going to be our one of our answers here. And next, to find the acceleration of the particle at 3 seconds, we'll say x double prime of 3 is going to be equal to 2 times 3 minus 8, which equals 6 minus 8, which equals negative 2 meters per second squared. So that's going to be our second part to that answer. Okay, next we get to g. Is the particle speeding up or slowing down at t equals 6 seconds? Well, we need to find our point of inflection where the, where the thing is accelerating or not. Well, to do that, we're going to draw another number line and put x double prime of t on top and x of t at the bottom. We're checking for concavity, positive or negative acceleration. So, for that, we set this equal to 0. 0 equals 2t minus 8. And solving for t, if we add 8 to both sides, we have 8 equals 2t. So t equals 4. This is our possible uh, point of inflection at 4 seconds. And at to the left, if we use this function, we plug in numbers. We can plug in 2 to the left of 4. Well, 2 times 2 is 4 minus 8. Well, that's going to be negative. So between 0 and 4, negative means we have negative concavity. To the right, if we plug in 5 for this function, 2 times 5 is 10 minus 8. We have positive acceleration. And so that's going to look like this. And next, at 6 seconds, that's the critical juncture. So we look over here. To the right of 5 would be 6. We'll just put 6 right here. And right here at 6, we have positive acceleration and positive velocity. So uh, we say the particle is speeding up. up because at t equals 6, velocity is positive. And we could say v of t or, or x prime of t. And acceleration is positive. So when acceleration and velocity are both positive or both negative, we have speeding up. So this will be our answer to part G. Anyway, this is a particle motion problem, pretty typical, and I hope this has been helpful to you. Thank you for viewing.